Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Back home. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, I have a little tidbit. A friend of mine took me to the grocery store today to get some groceries because my cupboards were empty. <clears throat> and I observed something, and I want to share it with you because sometimes we don't realize we can sabotage a potentially wonderful relationship by our issues, suspicions, and, and insecurities. And we end up starting arguments on nothing, based on nothing, for no reason, because of our faulty fi uh, filtering of what we think we heard, when we heard absolutely nothing at all. Listen, I was at the grocery store. Sorry, bad hair day, so I'm covering up. I was at the grocery store, and this young, this young lady and this young man were in the aisle with me. You know, I didn't know them. They were together. And one was looking for one thing. The other was looking for something else. <clears throat> and the guy said, well, maybe it's in this aisle. And she said, well, I'm going to look over here. And as they were looking for whatever they were looking for, then he said, oh, well, and the other thing might be in such and such an aisle instead of this one. <clears throat> well, then all of a sudden, this is what she says out of the blue. Well, well, you have to prove me wrong, so go right ahead and prove me wrong. Just help yourself and show me how wrong I was. I looked at her, and I said, what? And, I mean, I didn't say anything. It was none of my business, I know. But in my mind, the dialogue was, woman, what is your problem? The man just laughed it off, and I, he saw me looking at her like she was nuts. He tried to laugh it off, but it was so uncalled for. How many of us do that? Somebody says something, and because we assume they think a certain way about us because we are insecure, we turn it into an argument. Now, the man was not being snide. He was not being sarcastic at all. It was a matter of fact, harmless conversation with harmless commentary. I could not believe how that woman reacted. And I said to myself, that relationship is going to be very short lived. Unless that man has a whole lot of Jesus in him, that relationship is going to be very short lived. How many of you are spoiling your feast of charity because either you feel insecure. Wait, let me let me share this. A little, little psychology. Check this out. I was watching yeah, one of my old favorite programs, All in the Family. And I was watching Edith Bunker. Uh, she had grabbed her son-in-law and, uh, and scurried him into the kitchen so she could talk to him privately because he was overreacting to everything everybody was saying. So she told him, she said, do you realize why Archie always fusses at you? Do you understand what's happening? The reason is because he sees you, a young man with all your potential and all of your intelligence. You're in college. You're going far. Your future is all ahead of you. And so are all your opportunities. You have the intelligence. You have the wherewithal. You have the education he never could get because he had to quit school and take care of his family. So what ends up happening, he knows he will never be any more than what he is. But when he looks at you, it emphasizes what he is not. And he's jealous of you. Now, I say all that to say, I'm, I'm just quoting, I'm not really quoting, but paraphrasing that dialogue between Edith Bunker and her son-in-law so that you can understand. Sometimes it's from you or from someone else. When you feel insecure and you see someone else having more than you have in any category, maybe they're more intelligent than you. Maybe they figure things out. I mean, at the snap of a finger, they can just figure things out. It's a gift from God. It's not 
an indictment of what you're not able to do. So if a person is way better than you at doing something and they're very willing to help in that area, don't put them down and criticize them because they're good at it. Don't take it as an attack on you because you're not. That's how so many relationships can go down the toilet and true love can turn into true hate and resentment because you can spoil a feast of charity with insecurities that have nothing to do with their motives, nothing to do with what they're saying, but you will turn it around in your head and you will take it as an insult. Oh, that was a backhanded insult. Oh yeah, you just want to keep rubbing it in that you're so much more intelligent than I am. Baby, that's most of the time not even happening. Let me explain what I mean. <clears throat> when I was first dating my husband, God was taking me through an inner healing and deliverance season in my life, very deep. He had already delivered me from a root of rejection and he was dealing with other issues as well, especially things from my past, my childhood. So during that time, we had just started dating. And if he'd say something with a certain tone, the first thing in my mind would be, well, well, maybe he doesn't like that about me. Well, you know, why did he say that? Well, am I getting on his nerves? And you know, and my mind would just ticker tape all these, all these paranoid possibilities. This is when I knew that was on me and not on him. I broke up with him for almost a year and I just dove into ministry and dove into the things of God and just, I mean, at that point, the relationship was becoming a distraction and I did not want to lose out on my relationship with God for no man. So I broke up with him. What happened is when we got back together after he proposed, after he proposed for us to get married. I noticed all of a sudden the same things, the same tone, it meant nothing. I could see it so plainly because God had done so much healing in me. I didn't have to filter everything through my insecurities. Isn't that something? So as a result, we had a very successful marriage because I wasn't walking on eggshells dealing with all of my own insecurities because God had erased most of them. So if he said something and if I wasn't sure what he meant, instead of attacking him for it, I would say, oh, I'm sorry, what did you mean? Um, I wasn't quite clear on that. And he would explain it and I'd say, okay, cool. And that would be the end of that. It wouldn't end up being this big overblown nonsense like, what happened in that aisle? Oh, you just want to rub it in my face. Oh, you just want to show me that you're right all the time. I mean, you just don't realize, you guys, if we don't see ourselves, we always see the other person as, as meaning something wrong, giving us a little dig, a little underhanded, backhanded insult. And it's, it's nowhere in their mind. And we spoil something that could be potentially wonderful with our own poison. We poison. We poison. It's like somebody giving you a diamond ring. And because you think you're not worthy of it, you throw up or spit on it or toss it in the street. Because in your mind, you know they weren't giving you a real diamond ring. That was something from a Cracker Jack box. Why are you playing with my emotions like that? And they could have spent their life savings because you meant so much to them. We have to be careful how we handle other people with our own poison. And that's my tidbit for today. Think on that. Selah. God bless you.